Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and we have on here. What's up guys? It's Luca. So basically today we're gonna be going over a quick interview prep kind of video. So you can definitely jump around the timestamps. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna go over is study prep and all the resources that you use for coding interviews specifically. I guess you you first have to think about like are you a recent grad or are you about to graduate college? I will I will recommend that differently depending on if you're going for an internship, if you're going for your first job, if you're going for a new role at a different company. So maybe I can talk a little briefly about all of them if that's yeah. uh, what we want. Okay, so if you're looking for your internship, then I would say you have it a lot easier because like companies are more willing to accept you not having prior experiences. But definitely make sure you have taken some of the key computer science courses like basic Java, like data structure or like basic algorithm, like having some of these fundamental knowledge and know how to do well on the interview, especially some of the basic, more basic conceptual questions, like make sure to practice. That will get you probably most of your internship experience, which you can then trans transition into like a full-time bro. But if you're going for your full-time bro, hopefully you have some prior experience. If not, that means you have to work something right now. I'm hoping you are a rising senior or something. Like, what you can do is look for on-campus opportunity. Try to do well in your course and potentially become a TA. If not, potentially become a tutor for that course. Having any sort of teaching experiences also can help you. If not, attend hackathons and practice. Like, I would say at the end of the day, like no prior experiences. Don't worry too much. Just practice as much as possible. Attend events meet recruiters at those hackathons those career fairs they will definitely help you stand out so those are my recommendations for people who are still in college next up you're transferring to a new role and uh, this one is a little bit more straightforward because you already have prior interview experiences so you kind of know what to expect so for this one it's pretty much just practice and have a lot of resources that you can talk about for your current role so my recommendation for all of the above is practice so what can you do to practice? Leco is a good resource. Cracking the code interview is a good resource. If you know the company you are being interviewed at, try to search out those companies and see what targeted question they are more tend to ask and study those concepts, but definitely really helpful. So that's some of the higher levels. And uh, I'm sure in the later of the video, we will go in more depth, but yeah, that's a quick overview. What about for specific online resources that you could get maybe for free that you've used mm -hmm. for interviews? Yeah, so I would say LeetCode, HackerRank is definitely really good free resources. Like, sure, if you pay, you can have more premium feature like filter by company, filter by question types. But even if you don't, having those free questions, like just solve problems, it's good already. Like, make sure you're not just solving the problem to memorize it. Make sure you're solving it by learning and understanding the question. Like, sometimes, my advice for you is if you are preparing for an interview, don't be so bummed up if you can't come up with a solution. Go look at what other people have done and try to understand what they do. But most importantly, after you understand those, come back in a day or two. Try to solve it and see if you can come up with a solution this time around. And uh, I would say at the end of the day, practice. Like know what are some of the key focuses. Most companies, when they interview you, they care about data structures. What type of data structure? Hash map which is dictionary in Python. What type of algorithm, like breadth first search, depth first search, graph algorithms, those are really, really common. So make sure you brush those up, know some of the basic, at least how to code it up, and uh, know how to talk about them. So when you solve a problem, try to talk to yourself while solving the problem. If not speaking out loud, try at least tell yourself how you would talk during like a formal interview. Having those thoughts in your head will definitely set you up for success. Based on what you just told us, I guess we can go into kind of like whiteboarding, best practices. Do you have any tips on kind of not, I guess, getting nervous or doing the right thing while you're doing coding interviews in person or even online? Yeah, that's a really good question. So, so right now, most of the interview are still conducted online. So, so I would say in the near future, when you practice, definitely try to practice coding on like an IDE type of setting so like using sublime tags or like code or pad like coding on Lico hacker rank like those platform is very similar to what the interviewer might use uh, so like definitely be familiar with the syntax know the functions but if you don't know something like try to be straightforward with the recruiter too like uh, try to tell them like hey this is the function I just don't remember what it's called like 
kind of look up or something like that. Don't be afraid to ask a question like that. You're smiling right there, like, yeah. I I'm, never do that. Yeah, like, I mean, he, he does that. Yeah. No, no, it's a good thing. Like, no, it shows that you're confident. Yeah, like, what I'm saying is, like, sure, like, sometime nowadays when you're coding so much, like, it seems like obvious that you know it, but a lot of time I rely on the IDE to tell me about these things. And uh, it's really rare for me to use too much built-in functions, too too much, because like mostly you're writing your own functions. I also like to interview in Python, and for my job I don't really use Python, so a lot of times like I can't immediately come up with the function that does something, but I know it exists. And uh, of course, if you know it, it's always better than not knowing it for sure because like you know your computer kind of might expect you to know something but yeah at the end of the day i think if you don't know something like try to explain what the function does and if your recruiter is willing to let you search up or like tell you the function then that would be great so okay that actually goes into also my next question which is what to do if you get stuck so you just talked about what happens when you get stuck with calling a function or forgetting yeah. what a certain method is called so yeah. It sounds like you kind of just Google it and usually, you know, it depends how comfortable you guys might be with that, but definitely an approach to go. But what if you get stuck in the problem itself, like the logic? What if you don't know how to move forward with it? Yeah, that's a really, really hard question. Like, you know, my advice for you is I hope you don't get stuck because, you know, if you're stuck, that's, that's really tough. But at the same time, don't panic. Like, you can still get accepted into an internship job if you're stuck. Just make sure to work together with the interviewer. Try to take a step back and really understand the question. And if possible, go through a few examples and try to come up with a pattern that you see from the example. And another thing you can do is, if you feel like stuck, try to take a step back and ask a lot of questions. Don't act like you are stuck. Like constantly trying to ask clarifying questions. Maybe your interviewer will accidentally give you a hint or two. And that can be used to help you solve a question. And, and I, I think it's always better if you can come up with a solution that by talking. For example, if you have to come up with a, to solve a solution, for example, traversing a graph, and uh, you don't remember exactly how to code down breadth first search, but at least you know how to talk about it. So what you can say is like, okay, I have a node. I want to check if, we can, if I can go to the left. If I can, then I should probably go to the left. If not, then I go to I check if I can go to the right. So try to speak out your solution, maybe by speaking it out at the same time, commenting what you would do. You kind of have like a, it's not really pseudo code, but it's kind of like a blueprint of what you would do in English. And then you want to trans, translate that into code. So that's another approach that you can do. At least try to solve it mentally and walk through it by explaining how you would solve it. That can help you get unstuck at times. So that's a good recommendation, I would say. So the next thing is after your interview, what questions do you think are good to ask your interviewer and which are the ones that you typically ask or would suggest? Yeah, I would say like you want to really ask questions that you care about, that you can find meaning. Like if uh, it's very common for people to ask like comfort questions like, hey, how you like the company? And the, yeah, like it's really helpful. Like it's an interview setting. I don't know how honest they can be in those type of mm -hmm. settings because like, you know, they're representing their company. So I would say like ask questions that you care about. For example, like, oh yeah, like why are you staying at the company? Like it's another way of asking how you like it. It's kind of like you change the perspective, like you put it them more in control in a sense, like why are they staying? Like now they have to explain why. A lot harder than explain like how you like it, you know? How you like it can mm -hmm. be explained. You want to ask the question like why so why you stay and uh, another question that uh, that's really good is like what do you recommend me to do if i were in your shoes something kind of like relating like for example like if you were in my position like what do you want to give me advice kind of like asking them to be like a mentor figure kind of like in an interview like also kind of indirectly asking sensing like feedback for example like it's getting to know them like you know you can get the best type of question like response by asking more personal questions that more general because like the general questions like more cool aid like <laughs> you can probably just google online and just get the same response but yeah okay gotcha so is there anything not to do in one of these coding interviews is there something that's like a pitfall or a mistake yeah i would say like during those interview settings definitely 
try not to spend too much time like thinking of a solution if you can't come up with a more optimized solution or like something like don't spend more time trying to figure it out like coding like, most of them is like 45 to an hour you don't want to spend, spend more than 10 minutes going through the question and trying to understand the questions ask the follow-up questions so you want to have a sense of pacing and uh, at the same time another pitfall is after you finish your code definitely test it what I mean by test it is use the example that you did initially and walk through your code and see if you get the expected outcome and uh, that's a very important aspect testing your own code at the same time debugging while you are going through the code it's okay like if you make mistake while you're coding but if you do the testing and you can spot it you will be able to fix it really quickly and uh, more easily and uh, I would say at the end of the day definitely be comfortable using whatever language you're using and uh, yeah if you like me use some languages that you barely use at work and stuff like you might run into more trouble because like the interviewer might think like oh you choose this language you have a long work experience you should probably code more than just you know using simple if statement if they expect you to use more nested or like interpolation for example like like more fancy lambda function or something like if you don't know the language really well you won't be able to take advantage of those things and uh, that sometimes could be bad overall i don't think it's as bad as the first two point that i mentioned so yeah and this one is more of a opinion question so how important do you think is the behavioral interview versus the coding interview and do you have any tips for the behavioral side yeah to be honest like for me, I feel like the behavior interview doesn't really matter that much unless it's extremely red flag. So let's say you do really, really well on both of your coding or three coding, like whatever you're coding, and that you do all right on behavior. I don't think that will hold you back unless it's extremely red flag. Once again, like there are signs of this guy not being a team player or something like that. So I would say doing the behavior round, just like be honest, have fun. Like, you know, you want to list out some of your experiences beforehand. For example, like you want to come up with what you have done if you, at your previous job, if you have, if you are currently working. If not, what you have done previously at the internship. If not, what you have done previously at school. Just even school project is a good one to talk about. Like any of the course project that you work on, like anything that you took a lead, anything that you were such a team player, how you resolved human issues, like conflicts. Like those are really common questions. So definitely be ready for all scenarios by having examples ahead of time will prepare you to solve or answer all those questions and uh, one thing that's very common is the star approach mm -hmm. if you don't know like look it up like that's something like very good like you want to provide them a situation like what happened like a little bit of background like you want to come up with a task like what's the task objective and then what's the action that you took and what's the result what's the impact that's the approach that's like a quick story format that you want to follow for most of the behavior interview i would say overall if you have fun just be honest and just show your value like yeah i think you will do just fine so if someone was starting out and they had an interview in the next three days a month what would be the timeline for kind of studying through that yeah i mean that's a really good question so at this point in time like you know you have an interview coming up like i'm hoping that's a uh, that's what you meant even if you're not then that's when you should start applying for job and hopefully you will have interview aligned in the next month or two. So my object, my, my rule of thumb is like, if you know the company you are interviewing for, definitely search them up, like look for any friends who might be working there, ask them for any advice if possible. If not, then like search it online, see like what type of question they ask. Ask the recruiter, like provide you some study materials. A lot of, oftentimes they would, cause they want you to succeed. So like, don't be afraid to ask the recruiter, hey, like, do you have any topics that I should be studying up? But most likely what they will tell you is basic data structure, hash map, list, array list, like link list, like, you know, simple stack, queue, graph algorithms, like that first search, breath first search, like all those, you know, the most basic stuff that that's probably what they will tell you anyways. So I would say if you have 30 days, spend just the first week, just brush up all these topics, like pick the language that you're going to use study like the all the data structure understand how you would use it in your in the language of choice like know the syntax just play around with those look up all the algorithm 
traverse of sorting algorithms. I mean, you don't have to spend a week. If you finish that in like three days, move on to the next stage, which is practice. So how do you practice? I recommend practicing on Nico or HackerRank if you are more of a problem solver. Just solve as many problems as possible, like pace yourself, like do like three to five questions a day. And um, you don't want to spend too much time. If you really can't come up with a solution, like I mentioned previously, in like five to 10 minutes, Look at the solutions, look at the discussions, like try to understand what other people are doing and come back to it again. You want to save it and come back to it. So you want to do as many problems as possible. And if you are more okay spending money and your company happen to be on the code, and uh, I would say it's, it's okay to, it's reasonable. Sometimes you can consider opening a premium just to see all the questions that targeted by that company. I don't think it's necessary because there are a lot of resources out there that tell you the questions like without you paying so like you know yeah practice for the next one week or two weeks and uh, and then you want to spend like a day or two brush up like your behavior like draw down all the achievement that you have done so you can do that in between your coding sessions just to give your brain like a quick break like spend like every <laughs> other day break. yeah like just spend like a day or two and uh, i would say another aspect is like you might want to study system design if you are going for more mid-level or senior level position but uh, if you are entry level, you probably don't need that. But uh, if you need system design, that's a whole complete topic that we probably can talk about in another video if you guys are interested. And uh, yeah, I would say practice is definitely the key. And if possible, practice with a friend. That will help you to talk the solution out. And uh, yeah, and I would say like a week before your final interview, just brush up all the targeted questions and search up previous question that people might have shared online illegally NDA who cares but <laughs> just find an NDA first yeah first. most of them but uh, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah just study those questions and then practice some of the concepts that you realize you're weak at so doing problem solve like especially for Lico they kind of label what type of question they are and uh, if you recognize some of the questions that you're not very good at maybe you want to practice more on those topics and uh, less on the ones that you're already good at. For example, you're already so good at stack, then spend less time on that, more time on the graph ones. Some people will tell you like, hey, practice like sort of from most difficult to like, you know, least difficult and just do the hardest question. I would uh, oppose against that. Like, I think you want a good mixture. So like, don't just practice difficult. Like also go for the medium and the easy. Some of them might be easy, but it's not. So like, just try to cover it based on concept. So. That's my recommendation, like practice. All right, this was really helpful. Thank you so much, Beluga, of course, for coming on the channel. And as always, we appreciate your coding expertise. So are there any final words that you have maybe for the audience before we close out? Yeah, I mean, if you have a dream company or like a job that you really want, don't give up. Like you might feel like the last interview or if you already interviewed them, like, oh, they probably don't want to consider me again. I didn't do all last time. That's not true at all. Like they want you to apply. Companies want you to apply. Like they want to see you grow, like keep trying. And uh, yeah, I would say practice, always keep trying like every year or so, like apply again. And uh, yeah, best of luck. I think if you follow the step above, you will have a very good chance to ace your next interview. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. We post videos every Wednesday at 2pm and Sundays at 12pm. And let us know in the comments below if there's any other videos or future video topics that you would like to see from us um, on cybersecurity, software engineering, career and tech things. And hopefully we'll see you guys in our next video. Yep. Bye. Bye. Right, thank you guys. If you want to see part 2 system design, make sure to say system design below. Thank <laughs> you.